Right, let's build a bike. Inside this kit is everything I need to build myself a bamboo gravel bike frame. Bamboo Bicycle Club reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try one of these kits. The next step in this channel is obviously building my own frame. It's nice and clear right off the bat, they did send me this kit for free, but they were very adamant with the fact that they wanted this to be my independent review and show you exactly what it's like to build one of these at home. Nothing to it but to do it, I'm so excited to tuck into this. Let's get it open, start building, and then maybe later do a nice custom paint job on it. So basically what this kit is, is it's everything you need to build the frame. So it's got lugs, so the main bits of the bike, all the bamboo pieces, and a jig, and instructions, glue, the whole lot. So those are all the lugs. And then it comes with a whole lot of what modular dropout inserts. You know, if you wanted to make it with a derailleur, Vertical dropouts for a single speed. That is so cool. And then this should be, should be the bamboo. So what, you got your top tube, lead tube, down tube, seat stays, all the glue. Full instructions. Sick. Yeah. This this will be my pattern. Yeah, full pattern for my layout. And then this is bicycle frame building jig. So this holds is so that you can hold everything exactly where where it should be. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, let's clear it all out. We'll have a good look at everything. So sick. They've also sent me this carbon fork and apparently a discount code for the fork when you order online. So it's pretty nice. All right, let's have a look. I'm really impressed with the instructions on this one. It's super detailed every step of the way with nice instructions and diagrams that you can see what's going on. And at the end of each section, it's got a little QR code that you can scan and that'll take you through to the YouTube channel where it shows you a video of that whole step. I had the perfect piece of MDF. It recommends that you build it on a piece of MDF because it's super flat and you can screw stuff down and stick everything to it. I'm going to secure this down and then uh, we can crack on. So I have come across my first issue. The plans that I've got here on the table aren't exactly one to one. So if I take a measurement there, this should be 468.3. It comes out at 44.1. It does say in the very first thing that you get here to check that your plans are one to one. I will bring this up with the guys at Bamboo Bicycle Club and see what they say. It's not a huge issue because at least I know that and I checked that. Um, but if you're building this, just keep that in mind, okay? So speaking of Bamboo Bicycle Club, this is a brand new kit and a couple little teething issues with the one they sent me. They just swapped printers, so that, that was what happened with that scaling. By the time you get this video, they're gonna have sorted all that out. They sent me the plan straight away and I go just keep cracking on. What's real nice about them is they're a small company, great support, so if you do have an issue with your bike, just straight away message them and I'm sure they'll sort it out. The first part of this process is shaping the ends of every single tube so that they fit inside the frame nicely. It's a rinse repeat kind of process, nothing to it but to do it, you just gotta take your time and get it right. What you're basically doing is shaping each end so that it's nice and round and fits inside the tube. The tubes come pretty close to the final diameter of the exterior of the tube. So what you do is you measure how far it's gonna go in, all of that's on the plans. Mark that with some tape so that you don't damage the tube. And then remove the outside layer of the bamboo with an empty cutter, get it quite close to fitting in the tube. And then you sand around that piece. So 
once you've sanded and you've got kind of close to fitting. The last step with this process is getting in there and just filing a nice hard edge that your bamboo's got to sit up against it. In the beginning I used a metal file which was not the way to go. I went out and bought myself a nice sharp wood file and this worked really nicely. The seat stays are probably so far been the most, not the most difficult, they're, they're the easiest to shape but they're the ones you've got to take the most care of. There's not much, not much actual bamboo there and because they're young they seem to shape really quickly so you've got to just take your time really slowly and make sure that it, you don't over sand because your, your walls are quite thin. I found that the calipers have been really helpful here so when I'm shaping I'm just trying to get everything to be close to the final diameter and everything's kind of round and I'll work that with the anti cutter first and then I'll I'll sand it so that it's perfectly round just like that. Thought I should have started with these in the beginning but I wouldn't. I'd save these to either second last or last. I'm glad that's over. Look, it, it didn't take too long. It's probably three or four hours. The first one must have taken me about 40 minutes and the last one probably four. Okay, so next step is to do a test fit, a dry fit. I'll do that now and then um, we're going to assemble the, the jig and uh, hopefully everything goes nice and smoothly. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a gap here, but I think what you got to do is just kind of finesse it a bit because obviously these aren't even aren't straight. Like if you look at this one, oh sorry, like if you look at that one, it's got a bit of a kink to it. So I just got to get close. As long as my distance is all right through there, um, while turning and moving and trimming a little bit here and there, I think I should be okay. Okay, so that's my fit done, dry fit. Next, I've still got to do the opening up of these tubes for the internal cable routing. When I take it apart now, I'll do that. Um, and then I'm going to start setting up my jig, put it all together, maybe check a few measurements what, before I do so, and um, yeah, get the glue in. All right, as you can see down there, these little layers in where these are so we're gonna get in there with something and bang them out so that we can run cables sort of thing. We're gonna do it on the down tube and the seat stay. I found using a file just to get the last little bit of everything out worked really well to make sure I could get cables through smoothly. So the last little step that I did before building the jig was just wrap all my bamboo in some masking tape that'll just protect it later when we go to glue. <laughs> right, let's build the jig. enough for today I think I'm naked and I'm just gonna be making mistakes we don't want to do that once we start uh, gluing it's been it's been a pretty awesome experience so far even though it's a kit I am feeling like I'm building the bike I don't think I could do this without the kit um, even though I am quite competent with the tools yeah pretty pretty excited so far let's um, let's wait for tomorrow right day two I'm so glad I stopped last night I was just starting to rush and make mistakes and all that kind of stuff and I was going to break something. Moral of the story here and I think it, it goes without saying, just you know, take your time with this thing. You, you, you've got it to do the build. So enjoy the build, there's no reason to rush. I'm going to finish building up this little frame. I've got new plans to put down. 
yeah, let's let's take our time, get back on track, and uh, build this thing. Okay, so like I said earlier, this plan that I got was slightly out of scale. So I messaged James at Bamboo Bicycle Club, and he messaged me back straight away, saying that that's something that they haven't had before. They just changed their printer, so. Maybe a little bit of teething on that issue, but he was going to send me out a new plan that day. The only issue is that I'm on the other side of the world and that would have taken about a week. So instead of that, he sent me the plans to print myself here in town. Another issue with that is that it's Saturday and obviously nothing's open. I could wait till Monday, but I really want to crack on with this. I'm going to try and print it in A4s and line it up, just take my time and and see if I can achieve that. If I can't, I will wait for Monday, but I really want to crack on. Okay, I think it actually worked. I've checked all the measurements, everything on this thing, even over like 560, it's only like half a mil out. If that, I think, I think this is just, just gonna work perfectly fine. Let's build a bike. All right, so I think I'm going to rework all the pieces again with the jig all set up. I think that what's happening, you know, because bamboo is not perfectly straight. There's a lot of tension in the frame when I try to get it into that place. So I'm going to work to get each one to fit on the jig in the frame. And that should give me a good starting point to then glue it all together. So this is the drive fit of the back triangle or rear triangle. I'm going to try it because these measurements are super important. They're, they're all the same and this is all straight. So I've taken the, the wheel off my gravel bike. It's the same wheel that will eventually go on this bike. and I'm going to install the dropouts, put it on so that I can see that as it's sitting now, everything is, is straight. Very hard to show you, but it seems to be running right in the middle. Okay, so I think I'm done with my dry fit. I need to kind of remember that it's it's not quite an exact science, it's a bit of a craft. So there's a little bit of leeway here and there. As long as certain things are perfectly straight, that'll be fine. You're never going to get absolutely perfect stuff with bamboo. I think I am ready to glue, so I'm going to start and I'm going to glue this front triangle up. Yeah, a little bit nervous, but not going to finish if you don't crack on, so. So preparation is key when you set up to glue. So just make sure that you've checked all your measurements. You've done countless dry fits on this thing, that your jig's perfect. You've got all your glue and pieces ready to go. With this glue, you've got about half an hour till it kind of starts to harden up and then you can still kind of move stuff till about three hours afterwards so you do have a little bit of leeway but you just want to be nice and prepped when you tuck into this thing It's alright, it's not a huge deal, but I'll just pull it, pull this apart. Run my cables. It's the fact that both of us forgot. Oh, so busy with doing it. Yeah, just forgot. So. I make the mistake so you don't have to, just before you go in and glue everything up, just get ready with your internal cable routing so that it's all nice and easy and you don't have to do what I did okay, and right. redo the whole thing <laughs> after the fact.
And then every step along the way, I just make sure that all the joints are nice and clean of excess glue. And then I actually can go in there and tape those up so they don't move once the jig kind of settles in. Okay. So that's the front triangle glued up. I went together quite nicely. Of course, I forgot to put the cables in. Now we can start with the rear triangle, which is probably the most important bit. So with this, just checking my measurements, checking that everything's nice and straight is going to be absolutely key. I might do a quick dry fit and then glue up. Once I got that rear triangle together in the initial kind of fit, so important here again that you check all your measurements as you're going. What I'd found is that it was like slightly out, just a little bit of pressure on that frame. So I was able to kind of tighten that up with a bit of tape and magic to, to make sure that it sits perfectly in those measurements. Sweet. It was a lot of work to get to this point and now it's like point of no return I guess. I think I can check it in like three hours to double check the measurements on the, on the, um, the back triangle. But yeah for now you just, that's it. All that hard work. <laughs> just gotta wait. Right so it's been two days. The Plans recommend that you leave it overnight and then you can take it out of the mold. That's at uh, 18 to 22 degrees Celsius, which uh, we have not had here. It's the middle of winter. I think what we're going to do is take it out the mold, remove everything, remove all the tape, and we can tidy up the shed and have a good look at it. I'm very excited for this. Also, very nervous. There it is. So light, it's so awesome. All right, that's it, she's done. Super stoked with how it's turned out. Um, I can't recommend this kit enough. It's exactly what it says on the tin. I built a bamboo bike in my shed with minimal tools and no experience and here we are. You know, this kit isn't for everybody. If you did just want a bamboo frame, I recommend just buying a bamboo frame. If you're after the experience of actually, you know, building a bike like this, then this is 100% for you. And when you do, just remember that it is all about that process. You, you buy this thing t to get the ability to build your own bicycle and the reward of that process. I'm so stoked with how it's turned out. It's something that I'm gonna cherish forever, especially once I got a good paint job on it and some nice components. Just a massive thank you to Bamboo Bicycle Club for reaching out to me and sending me this kit. I've had such a blast building this thing and can't wait to finish it and ride it. In the next video, we're gonna be doing a full custom paint job on this, sealing the frame, and then building up the bike. If there's any components that you think you'd like to see on this thing, comment down below and let me know what you think I should put on this. But yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks again to Bamboo Bicycle Club for supporting the channel and sending me this bike. There'll be links to all this stuff down below. Also, I believe a little coupon code, check it out. But yeah, look forward to that next video. I'll see you next time.